my name's Lori. I'm an apartment life community coordinator and watercolor artist based out of Greensboro, North Carolina. Today I partnered with Alex and Ben, the apartment life team over at Sutton at Broad Street Market in Fuquay Farina, North Carolina, to bring their residents an extra special class designed just for them. We're so glad you're here. Um, welcome. Residents who RSVP'd in time for this event are going to have all the supplies they need and a special little treat delivered right to their door. Um, if you didn't RSVP in time or you're re-watching this after the fact, I'm going to put an Amazon list with all of our supplies in the description below, so check that out. Today we're going to be painting a tropical caladium plant. We're going to be going over some of the basics of water control, value, how to hold your brush and get some different effects on it, as well as some color theory to kind of get the effects of shadows that we in sunlight that is going to come out really beautifully. Hang in there, it's easier than it looks. For residents at Sutton and Broad Street Market, I want to make myself available to you during the time and airing of this class so that I can help answer any questions that you have. This video is going live on Tuesday the 26th from about 7 to 9-ish p.m. You can find me down in the YouTube comment section. I'll be over on my Instagram in my stories. That's probably going to be the best way um, for me to explain and answer for any of your questions. Um, that way you can send me a video of, you know, a problem that you're having and I can just answer it with a video myself. I'm here for you guys. I want you to get the most out of this class as you can possibly, possibly can. This is going to be fun. You guys are going to do great. All right, let's go ahead and dive on in. Let's start with a look at our supplies. Today we're going to be painting with four colors. Permanent Rose, Lemon Yellow, Sap Green, and Ultramarine Blue. Um, you can get a lot of colors from just those four and we're going to be mixing a lot and learning a bit about color theory. Also in your kit, uh, you're going to have an outline for our project, a piece of graphite transfer paper, and two sheets of watercolor paper. One is going to be for your project and the other is going to be for practice and scratch paper. Um, you'll go through that a lot faster than you think. Um, we're also going to be working with a round tip brush. This is a Princeton Velvet Touch round six. In addition to that, we are going to need a large jar of water, a paper towel or a kitchen hand towel, something to blot the excess water on our brush on, and a pencil or a pen. It also helps to have an eraser, but that's not super duper necessary. Let's start with tracing our outline. Now, go ahead and take out your graphite paper. I've cut mine down to fit the size of the paper I'm working on, just to make my life a little bit easier. If yours isn't cut down, that's totally fine. You'll be able to figure it out in no time. Now, graphic, graphite paper has a dark side and a light side. The dark side is where all the graphite is, so that's actually gonna be the one that we put face down on our paper. Before you jump into tracing with your graphite paper, there's something I want you to know. Graphite paper has a lot to do with pressure. That's how it transfers the color onto the paper. So if you get your paper and you press down super duper hard when you're drawing, it's gonna come out as a super duper dark line. If you use light pressure, it's gonna come out nice and light. Now, because we have some lighter areas on this project, especially around the outer edges of the leaves, um, we don't want to have super duper dark lines. So as best you can, use some light pressure. Now also be mindful of how your hand presses down on the paper, because that can leave smudges too. Um, and by the way, this graphite paper, you can kind of see the outline of something else I've painted on it, but you can use this stuff over and over and over and over again. Um, it's super duper helpful. All right, so I'm going to put my paper down. I'm gonna put my graphite paper down dark side first and my outline right on top of it. And I'm gonna use a piece of washi tape to keep that in place. That's a personal preference. You don't have to if you don't happen to have any on hand. And some down here as well. There we go. All right, let's dive in to tracing our outline. Remember light pressure, not so light that it's barely touching and you can kind of lift it up and check how you're doing, but be mindful not to be too heavy handed. And 
these veins, um, if you want less veins, if you want more veins, this is the time to change that because plants uh, are always just a little bit different. Even the same uh, species, they look like the same thing, but they have their own individual variants. So the edge of my leaf is going to be different from the edge of your leaf, and that's okay. If you want to change it a little bit, add more jackety bits, go for it. If you don't, that's fine too. As long as it kind of keeps with this same triangular shape for all of these, you'll be able to tell what it is. I wouldn't add too many of these veins. And make sure you are going lighter pressure on these veins too. Later on, we're gonna be going over them in something darker but if you go too dark and your pencil misses where, not your pencil, she's sorry. Um, if your paintbrush misses kind of where exactly you drew before, if it's too dark, you won't be able to fix it too much. But again, we can erase some of this in a minute. I'm done. I know I've sped through that, but this might be about the tenth time I've drawn these things. So if you need to pause it for a minute, pause it to catch up. I'm going to go ahead and take off my tape and get rid of this stuff. See? Look at that. Nice little outline. So there's my outline. It's darker in some places than I want it to be, but that's okay. We can fix that. I'm gonna get an eraser and erase that very gently. I'm using a soft uh, general tri-tip eraser and I'm gonna use very gentle strokes. Watercolor paper is, I'm sure you've noticed, made a lot differently than normal printer paper or normal cardstock. It's thick. It seems almost like it has a bit of fibrosity to it. That's a word, right? Uh, we'll go with it. Um, anyway, it's made to be able to carry the weight of the water that you paint with. So we've got to be gentle as we erase things um, to make sure we don't destroy that top layer because that will affect how it holds the water. Just gentle touches. And again, we're not going for, you know, absolutely no visibility but something's better than nothing. Before we get painting, we need to activate our paints. So I'm gonna put a couple drops of water into each color and give them a minute or so to sit. Now that we have our outline done and uh, touched up and erased in the areas that we want to do that in, we are going to set this aside and we're gonna come back to it in just a minute. It's time to start digging into actual watercolor technique so that we're prepared to paint our project in a little bit. Now, if you've never come in contact with watercolor before or you've done art but you've never done watercolor, this is where we're gonna start. Um, watercolor itself is very um, concentrated pigments plus water equals the color that you want. Uh, if you use just a little bit of water, I just dipped and wiped off my brush on the edge of the water to get some concentrated pigment, it's gonna be a darker color. If I dip my brush, wipe it off just a smidge, go again, it's a lot lighter. If I dip it, wipe it off, and go again, it's lighter still. In watercolor, you don't add white to colors. I mean, you can, but typically you don't because the paint is translucent. When you add water so that there's more water and less paint, that's what makes your lightness, is the paper coming through. So I want you to pick a color, and we're going to start in and do this exercise right here. So pick your color, grab your brush, and I will have to bring this in. The hardest part about watercolor, honestly, is having the water control down and making the intensity of the color, that's how 
dark or how light or how pigmented or not pigmented it is, having that work in your favor. So your paper towel is going to be your best friend for this. Even if you're trying to get a very lighter light color, if you're trying to get a very light color, um, you're still going to need your paper towel for that. Um, if you get too much water on your brush and it's just sopping and you can tap it and it splatters, um, that's just going to soak your paper um, on the Canson stuff. The Canson's a good paper, but it, it can't handle that much water. Um, you'll need something made completely out of cotton to be able to handle that kind of water a little bit better for large painting. But So water control is the thing. The first thing you're going to do is dip your brush in the water, wipe it off on the side, just kind of get rid of that excess so it, it's damp. It's not sopping but it's damp. And I want you to come over here and pick the color that you choose. I'm going to go for sap green now because I love that color. And then just with that damp brush without adding more water or tapping it on anything, just give it a good color. See that? Um, as I go down, my water, my pigment's coming off and my water is still on my brush. So up here is going to be a lot lighter, darker than down here. You see that beautiful golden knee green shining through. If I want to even it up, I just kind of go up and down. Pull the pigment around in that little section. Look, a beautiful little green square. I'm not going to dip my brush in the paint again. I'm going to dip it briefly in the water. I'm going to dab it. So now it has just a little bit more water and a little bit less pigment. And we're going to do it again. And see, that's lighter. Gosh, I can't get enough of that sap green. Oh my goodness. All right, one more time. Dip. Blot just a bit. And that's about the lightest I think we can go. We might go one more just to see what happens. Yeah, that's super duper light. Now for the background of our caladiums, we're going to be going super duper light and then adding just a little bit of depth on top of that. So this, that's where this technique is going to come into play. And as we're going, we're going to be using our scratch paper a lot. So I would suggest using one side of your scratch paper for practice, flip it and use the other side for when we're painting to test your colors, to test your water control, to test your techniques. All right, so that has to do with value, the dark to light of the pigment on your brush. Let's do this one more time. I'm gonna go with pink. It's harder to tell on the yellow just because it's not, it's a cool yellow, it's soft, it's gentle, it's not gonna be super duper vibrant, so it's a little trickier. So we're gonna do it with the pink, all right? I have my damp brush, I've covered it in pink. I didn't just dap at the tip, he just Get it all over there. There we go. There's our darker value permanent rose. I'm dipped in white just once on the side of my glass. There's kind of a more medium value. Dipped in white lighter value and again when we do our caladium we're going to be going for the lighty lightest just to start now the good news is if you feel like you've still this still looks really dark to you don't worry watercolors dry a lot lighter than they look at first which is good and bad but in this case it can be very good especially when you're beginning if when you're painting later on you go oh my goodness this is just so dark. This is never going to work out. It's okay. Don't get discouraged. Breathe and let it dry and see what happens. All right. So that's our value change. Next, we're going to talk a little bit about how we use our brush to get different effects. Now for these boxes, I've been using a bit of pressure on my brush. I've been, instead of just hitting on top like that, I've been dragging along the side at a gentle press. That's how we're going to get um, those large wash areas done. That's how we cover ground 
on our paper as by doing that. So we've been practicing that a little bit with our wide strokes. Now we're going to transition into doing something a little wider. How we do our pressure changes how the how we do pressure on our brush changes the effect that comes out. So when we do press down, we get a wider thing. When we use just a little bit of pressure like that, it comes out thinner. And when we use almost no pressure at all, straight up and down on our paper like this, it's going to come out a super thin line. We're going to be using these thin lines later. So why don't you just take your practice sheet and practice doing just some thin lines. Get used to holding your brush kind of up and down as opposed to like how you might normally hold a pencil. Up and down. And do some short little ones. And do some long ones. And for those, I recommend not using your wrist. Don't just do like that number or like that because your wrist, when you pivot here, you can only go like that. Now some of our lines on our leaf do that. Over here it does have that curve. But this one, the leaf is bigger and that line is straighter because that leaf is facing us. So we need to practice getting that kind of a length without um, interruptions. So if we do that, and then we scoot down and we do that, it can, get, it can tend to get broken up a little bit and not look like a nice smooth line. Either one you want to go for is fine, but instead of moving from your wrist, try dragging your arm down from your elbow as you go across. I tend to do horizontal lines a lot easier than my vertical ones, but it never hurts to practice both. And while you're doing these strokes, just kind of all over, I have no rhyme or reason to this. You can practice your values. If you'll notice when you start painting, uh, after dipping your water and then your paint, it'll come off darker. And as you go, it'll get lighter and lighter and lighter because you're running out of pigment. Instead of grabbing more pigment, grab another drop of water, wipe your brush on the side, and try again with some lighter lines. This stuff's just pretty fun. One of the other techniques we're going to need is similar to our thin lines. It's our stippling, which means using the tip of our brush to make little dots. Um, these little dots kind of create that texture of the leaf. Since the caladium leaf does have those spots that creep up, we want to be able to recreate that. So for that, we're just going to we get pigment on our brush, and holding our brush up and down, create little dots. Light pressure. See those tiny ones? I'm just barely touching the paper. If you push down a little bit harder, but not much, they can get a little thicker. For our leaf, we are going to be starting with thicker dots or more clustered dots and then they're going to get a little sparser and farther apart and smaller as we head up the leaf um, veins. So, just do that stipple wherever there. This is a scratch sheet of paper it doesn't have to be organized, you just gotta get the practice in. Now, this is gonna hurt me, but to, if you're pushing down like that, so that the whole bristles on your brush are moving, that's gonna kinda destroy the tip of your brush. Um, oh my poor brush, this is my favorite one. So, and it's gonna cover more area. Um, this is the idea of pointillism, of using lots of little specks 
to create the sense of depth instead of just that. It's not too bad for a leaf, but the caladiums, because they have that. All right. I'm going to add some water to my brush for this one to see if I can get these things to lighten up just a smidge. There we go. Pretty cool. All right, now if you need to practice these more, feel free to pause the video, get the practice in, and keep moving. All right, so we've done our dark to light boxes. We've done our strokes. We've done our stippling. We've worked on how to hold the brush. The next thing is how to move the color on the paper. One of the techniques we're going to be using is to kind of blend out a color. You'll hear this a lot if you watch watercolor tutorials. Um, blending out means you start with a darker color, a more intense darker value and instead of right here you know we transitioned in clear different patterns um, we did our dark color we rinsed our brush just a little bit we did the medium we rinsed our brush a little bit we did a light instead of doing it like that we're going to take our darker color wipe our brush in the water dab off the excess and use the water on our brush to pull that color out and it might automatically flip it might not you might have to I'm going to do that a little bit. I'm going to get another wipe of, drop of water on my brush. I got some green mixed in there, but that's okay. See, it's transitioning from the darker to the lighter because we're dragging the pigment out. I have another video um, on my YouTube channel. I'll link it below. Um, doing watermelons where we did just that exact sort of thing. We did dark little triangles and very pigmented tip rinsed out our brushes a little bit and drug the pigment out so if you want to practice this some more I suggest going down and watching it and you can still adjust all right we have practiced our basic techniques if you feel like you want to have a little bit more practice or you want a little bit longer to deal with this, please pause the video, take the time you need. Um, but if you're ready to go, let's dive on in. All right, we have practiced. We've got that down. It's time to move on to the main event. Now the first thing we're gonna lay down is going to be our really super duper light pink. And this is gonna really test those water control skills you just had. So in order to get the pink that I want, I'm going to unload a bunch of pink onto my palette. And again, if you have the wells, you don't really have to do that. But I'm gonna add in some lemon yellow. We're not going for a straight up pink like we did earlier. That's a little too vibrant for what I want to do here. Um, we're going for a gentle corally pink. Maybe a little bit more. Oh yeah, that looks good. All right. And because this is going to be super duper light, we're going to add a lot of water to where we have that space on our palette. We could very easily um, dip in our color, water it down in our brush, test it to make sure it's good, and then dive in. Or we could think smarter, not harder, and just make it as light as we need it over here so we have this constant well of um, pigment to pull from that's just the right value that we need. So as you're doing this constantly, test it a little bit lighter for me. There 
we go. And I know this looks a little concentrated, but it will spread out once we start putting it down. All right. So I'm going to I'm left right-handed, so I'm going to start with the left and move right and we're just going to lay down the base colors for each of these leaves. Um, in my reference, this part of the leaf is underneath this one. So we're going to start here and pull out the color to kind of create that bit of shadowy depth. All right. There we go. And this side of the leaf is going to be a little lighter. So I'm just going to pull all the way down to the end there and not give it any touch-ups. And I think I might add just a smidge of pink just to the shadowy part. One thing to be careful of as you're doing this particular part is getting too much water on your page. It, I know it's hard, um, but if you feel like you have too much water and it's hard to move the pigment around, just take your paper towel, dab where you want to lift the color, or dab where you think the water is too much. See, I'm going to use it to kind of gently lighten this particular part of my plant right here. That way I just have this little bit of lightness in contrast with the shadows going on over here. And if this isn't perfect the way you want it, hold on, we're going to come back in a minute and do a second layer. And also if you feel like it's too dark, again you can lighten it if you want or you can just kind of wait and see. Watercolor dries a lot lighter than what it puts down as. All right. I'm going to start on this half of this leaf so these guys don't touch the edges. Um, if you touch the edge of one color, with another before it's dried, they'll kind of see how that whooshed over and it'll mix up all funky and, and we're trying to avoid that. So I'm going to give that side a minute to dry by starting over here if that makes any sense. And this side is going to be just a little bit darker up here. Just a little bit more intense color than that other side. There we go. And move some of that pigment back up since the bottom isn't quite as light. All right, I'm gonna add some water and whoops, that's still a little damp. We'll just fix yawn up right there. And I'm gonna come in and start working on this side. At this point, we're just filling it in. Since that's still wet, I'm going to just come close to it and leave a space. We're going to cover that space up with green in a little bit anyway. So it doesn't have to be absolutely positively perfect along that line. And if you feel like you go over more than you want to, then it's okay. We're just going to change the shape of the leaf. These are pretty fluid. I'm going to drop in a little bit more color up here that's just getting some pigment on my brush and tapping it up where I want to see shadows kind of along down there. All right, now we're going to come over to this part. Um, this is going to be one of the lightest areas on our plant. So we're going to make sure that it's a super duper light value. Oh yeah, that's perfect. And you can have this one a little more pink if you want. You can add, make it a little bit more yellow, whatever floats your boat. And we're gonna start in that corner and drag out. And 
it should be so light that you can almost barely see it. And again, I'm leaving a little white space between this part of the leaf and this one. Just the thinnest little line I can. All right, we're gonna start adding in a little bit more depth. Now I still have a wet spot right here. I'm gonna wait for that to dry a little bit more. And since this part, this layout was so thin, it dried really quick. I'm gonna go ahead and paint in those veins in pink real quick. I realize I forgot to sketch them on there when I was tracing, but that's okay. I kinda know the shape that they're in. And because this is still very gently wet, it's gonna bloom a little bit and bleed. That's okay, we're gonna go back over that area in green in a minute, just to kind of add a depth to it. This is just kind of a texture behind all of that. All right, before we go on to our depth, I do want to address something that you guys might be having an issue with, because I'm clearly having an issue with it. Water control. Um, when you have too much water on your page and it dries, it creates this hard edge around where that pool, be, pool was because it's pushing all of the pigment out and around instead of, you know, keeping it even throughout the place. Um, there's a couple things we can do about these, uh, especially after they've dried. You can go in with a rinsed and tapped off damp brush and kind of smudge the edges a little bit. See, that's kind of softening that hard edge. And again, around here it doesn't matter because there's going to be green on it, so I'm not going to worry too much about that. Um, but that's one of the easiest things to do. Don't let this um, make you feel frustrated, especially in this stage because this is a base layer. We're about to put some texture on top of this stuff. And then when we're done with the texture, we're going to put green on it. And then we're going to put green texture on it. So it's going to be buried under a couple of layers. So if you have one of those hard edges that's just bothering you so deeply, don't worry about it. It's going to be camouflaged and all the stuff that's going to be going on on top of it. All right, and since I messed with that, I'm going to let that smudging dry before I go in with my depth color. And I'm going to start over on this leaf. So I'm going to do just kind of a thicker shadow of pink underneath the veins that are there. We're going to put green on top where the lines are, but this is going to give it a depth effect. And for the long one, I'm going to put it on the right side of the vein. Because that's where the shadow is. Crazy times. All right, um, I'm also going to just kind of give some little squiggles just with the water and pigment that's there because I've managed to keep it light. I don't have to add any more water or pigment. It's just going to add a little bit of depth to what we've got. Over here, we don't have to do it quite so much. I wanted to find some of those areas right there. And I'm going to darken right there just a little bit. Now I'm also going to take this time to go ahead and do this little part right here. So this is a, going to be a darker value pink, um, but it's got a little bit of green in it because it's not the same vibrant, you know, right here, just straight up pink or even straight up coral from the mixture we have. It's, it's very vibrant, but on our reference picture, that's very desaturated. So we're going to jump into that and learn some color theory. Sorry, I love this part. It's really wild. We're going to take a little bit of sap green. I'm going to start with it over on the edge. And I'm going to introduce a little bit to my pink. And see that right there? It's just desaturated. It's brought down the vibrancy. Complementary colors work like that. And it's absolutely mind-boggling. If you get two completely opposite colors... For example, pink and green. 
they're opposites on the color wheel. They're um, they're complementary. Uh, orange and blue, yellow and purple, that sort of thing. They're opposites, which is great because they come out very striking against each other. They're very eye-catching colors. But when you mix them together, <laughs> you get brown because it's a little bit of every pigment that there is. The pink or st is our stand-in for red. Um, and then green is yellow and blue, so you mix it all together and it's just kind of a big grumpy mess. But if you're going for browns, there's a lot of really cool tones you can, uh, brown tones you can blend by using color theory like that and by using opposite colors. Or in situations like this where we want something to look darker but we don't want to use the brightness of the, the pink or red, we can tone it down very easily just by adding a little bit and I mean little bit of the green to the pink. I mean, that's great. All right, so I'm going to, with the most intensity of the color, start in here. And I think my water has desaturated it so much and uh, brought it down a little lighter than I want it to be. So I'm gonna add some more pigment, test it out. Yeah, there we go. We're going to start here and kind of creep along. I'm going to rinse my brush, dab it, and I'm going to drag this color out. And maybe add a little bit more to make it go further. And as I'm coming towards the end here, I'm going to be using my paintbrush up and down so I can get that tip. A little more pigment along the bottom there. Cool. See that stands in such stark contrast to the bright pinks that are over here. It's really cool. And that's a shaded part of the leaf so it's not catching the light and drawing our eyes like the rest of this is. Alright. I have a little bit of my coral left. And my leaf over here is dry enough. Um, the best way to tell if your page, if your paper is dry and ready for more stuff on top of it is to give it just a gentle tap. Um, even if it doesn't look like it has glossy water on it, if you tap it and it's still noticeably colder than the paper around it, it's still a smidge wet and it's best to give it a mow. But we're fine, so I'm going to go ahead and draw in my veins. And this doesn't have to be super exact since these are kind of just depthy shadows. As long as it's got that light value from us uh, keeping on the palette with extra water, then we'll be good to go. Um, now I'm only going to do shadow texture on this half right here because this is the half that's a little shadowed. So I'm just going to green it down, squiggle it out a little bit. I'm going to rinse my brush dab it and just gently blend this out to the edge a bit. And it doesn't look like it's doing much, but once we get other stuff on top of it, it's going to create a really cool depth effect. With just damp, a damp brush, I'm going to do kind of the same thing over here to soften it, to bring a little bit more depth, even though it's going to be highlighted. All right. There we go, we are done with the first part. For our next step, we're going to go ahead and mix up a couple of greens and get a good quantity of it on our palette so we have that to pull from. I am also going to change out my water because it's slightly pinkish. Um, adding that pinkish water to the green is gonna desaturate it a little more than I want, so I'll be right back. All right, I've got my fresh water and I'm ready to start mixing up some greens. Um, while I'm mixing my greens, I'm gonna give this some time to dry. We really want those little depth effects that we added to be dry before we go in with green. Otherwise, the colors are going to rush together when they hit each other and make that lovely, but not for this project, color brown. Lovely is used um, 
very generously. So I'm going to start by getting a bunch of green into its own well. Now if you have the little palettes with the holes in it and you have the green squished into one hole, pull it out and put it in a different well, a different little circle, because we're going to be using a lot of different green mixtures. Um, and you want to be able to pure, pull from your pure green in order to get the effect that we're going for. All right, so I've got a lot of green over here, a lot of the sap. We're gonna be starting again from this side and moving over. On my reference photo, this side, because it's hitting the light, it's gonna be a lot whiter. So we're not going to use as much blue as we might over in here. And as we move this way, the shadows are gonna be our bluest green. We're gonna mix up a darker blue and not not darker blue, a darker sap green with the blue and kind of come out from there. And this part's gonna be darker and this part's gonna be darker and slightly less saturated. And this is gonna be more of a pure light sap green. Um, but to start over on this side, we're just gonna add in a little bit of blue. And that still has some. Let's give that a test. That might not have enough of that in it. And these don't have to be exact. I'm just being kind of persnickety. All right, that'll do. I'm gonna add a little bit of water because I want that to be not super dark, but not super light. The trick of the green part of this project is going to be playing with our values to make sure the lighter parts are lighter and the darker parts are dark but not too dark. Because if you go too dark right here, you're still going to have to get something that looks shadowed underneath it for this stem. And the same thing right here, these connections. So it's going to be a tricky balance and that's why you have your scrap paper to test. All right? So let's dive on in. I'm going to start at this end of my leaf and kind of follow the outline. It doesn't have to be perfect. Again, remember if this is a, its own plant, it's its own shape, you can make it up as you go along. You can change the shape as you go. If you colored outside the lines, you can cover the gaps with your green. It works. So we've got our line. Up here, I'm going to put in just a smidge of the the bluer color because that is a shadow right there. And while I have that blue part on my brush, we're gonna start coming out with the little stipples right there. Those just little blotches. There we go. And again, this is just kinda of making that little tip touch there. I'm gonna get the slightly greener green I know that's confusing. Back on my brush as I move down. And these blotches are going to be thicker than the ones we're going to use later. They're only going to come up just a little bit. And kind of as I'm coming down here, it's naturally losing a bit of the intensity of the color as the pigment's coming out and the water's still on my brush. So I, I quite like that effect. So we're gonna go with that. All right, now we've got that side done. We're going to rinse our brush just a little bit, a dab, a tap on the paper towel, and we're gonna start with our even smaller stipples a little bit farther apart, sparser. They're not super duper set for a reason. They're just t little touches of color. And we will be going back over those lines in dark green. Um, we might start with this doing the dark green first just to envision it a little better on that leaf. But for now, we're just going to stick with that. All right, that side's done. We're going to, because again, that's a shadow, we're going to add a little bit more blue to our mixture and start with that over here. That's not enough blue. And this is probably going to be too much blue. It is. Yeah, that'll do probably. It's really just a guessing game. 
and none of it has to be exactly perfect. Yeah, that's a lot better. All right. Um, now we're going to, as we do our stipples on this part of the leaf, we're going to pretend that it comes up around here. Because again, if we took a picture of this, that's what that leaf in real life would be doing. So we're going to imagine that we've started stippling here and we're gonna just dot up a little bit. And maybe there's some over here on this part. We don't want to start here and come inward. We're gonna pretend it started back here. And that's about as intense as I'm gonna get on those. We're gonna hate doing these little dots by the time we get done with the other leaves, but it comes off with such a cool effect just by literally touching your brush onto paper. All right, I'm gonna dip my brush in the water, dab it to get off the excess, and I'm gonna start coming up here. And I want those to be a little bit darker since the one right next to it was a smidge dark. So I'll just drop that in. And now you can always come back and add more of these little stipply dots, but you can't as easily take them away. So if you're going to err on the side of anything, err on the side of less is more. All right? Okay. There we go. Now, like I said, we're on this one. We're gonna do our veins first. Um, for this one, since this plant on that side is going to get less sun than over here, I'm going to add in a little more blue and I'm just kind of keeping a constant mixture going on over on this side. Maybe just a little bit more. Yeah, that'll do. And I'm going to move that so I can get this nice long line first. Again, up and down. Then you can go as slow or as fast as you need. It's okay if this is thicker or thinner than you want it to be. Pull from your elbow. There we go. I'm going to carefully go along with these lines. Reload pigment as I need. I'm probably going to do a little bit more darker, heavier pigmented on this side. And that tip's a little wonky, but we're gonna have dots coming up there anyway, so it'll be fine. And then a lighter green coming on over here. And there we go. All right, now it's time to do our outline of this side, and then we'll move this way. Um, we want to do the darker part first. That way we can lighten up as we go, and we're gonna wait for this right here to dry while we're working over here. So with my Darker blue, I think I'm gonna add a little bit more pigment just to keep up with the intensity. We don't wanna to go too, too dark, but we also don't wanna be super duper light. Yeah, that'll do. All right, I'm going to, with my tip, just, I'm gonna start on this side, actually. We're gonna get a little bit of that in because that's got a smidge of shadow, and then we're just gonna follow along. And this doesn't have to be a perfect fine point because we're going to smudge it up with some dots in a minute anyway. And I'm turning this um, so I can avoid putting my hand there on the wet part and smudging it. This would be such a sad thing to do to get this far into a project and I have it smudge and then I have to re-record everything. All right. And a little bit of blue just for the up here bits. And 
And for this thing, um, this, the little dots that come around here, here we only went in about maybe, I mean, less than a centimeter. But this leaf is going to be bigger, so we're going to come in just a little bit further. Because it's bigger. And my smudges here at the bottom part are going to be bigger. One, to save time, and two, because that's what it looks like in proportion. And as I come down to the tip, it'll go in, it'll get smaller. I add a little bit more sap green to my mixture. There we go. That's round one. I'm going to dip my brush in water and dab it again and start with my kind of second round, second layer of these dudes. Not so much at the end. Dip, wipe, dab, and fourth round. Okay. And I'm going to come around the edge here again just with something a little darker just to smooth it for my personal preference. If you want to come back over and do this part again in a darker color just along the edge, feel free to. All right, now we're gonna do the other edge. Ooh, one thing real quick. If you've noticed, I still have a smudge of green right here. I tried not to smudge, but it happens. The best way to handle that if you have a smudge on your paper or something that you don't want there, is to get your brush really clean, dab it off, and with your damp brush, go over it with water and kind of give it a good little scrub. See? Right as rain. Now some pigments are going to be a lot more staining than others. That means even after you've lifted it up from the, from the paper, and that's what this is called, it's called lifting, is when you use a damp brush to kind of scrub at the color, and kind of scoop it and scrub it off. That's called lifting. But some pigments are gonna stain and you can only get them but so off at a time. If that is your problem and you've just got so much of a taint there that it's, there's no way you can get every ounce of the color and it's just driving you nuts, that's okay. Do your best, do the best you can, and you can always go over with a bit of white acrylic paint or a gel pen. Um, this stuff right here, uh, Dr. Paige Martin's Bleed Proof White is a favorite of mine. Um, pro, watercolors, pro, pro watercolors use it all the time, especially if they're the kind of people that tape down the edges of their painting and as they're pulling off, the color's steeped over. I mean, we use it all the time. It's fine. Um, all right, now to go on to this edge. Right here is almost dry. Um, if yours is not dry right along here, then give it another minute. Go clean out your glass of water. Go refill your drink. Um, but if this is dry enough, then we'll give it a go. I'm going to add some more sap green back into my mixture. Yeah, there we go. And maybe a smidge of water to the whole thing. And we're gonna start on the edge. Actually, I do want a little bit of green so we can kind of cover that transition there. And I don't want them looking too dissimilar, but I don't want them to be too dark either. It's a weird balance. we go all the way down to the end and we're gonna do our little dots again you guys are gonna be so tired of dots like I cannot emphasize that enough but it kind of gets this cool effect going and for the larger dots as 
on this leaf as compared to this one. I'm just using more contact with the tip of my brush. So it looks like it's leaving little ovals instead of just little dots. There we go. I know you guys can't tell this, but during the process of me painting, um, it's been snowing and sunny and rainy and snowy and sunny again, all in just the same, you know, 30 minutes of time. North Carolina weather is wild. All right, I'm gonna sparse it a little thinner, closer to the edge down here. And then I'm going to tap my brush at it and come out with another layer. And you can add more pigment as you need. And again, there's not really a rhyme or reason to any of this. I don't want you to go through and go, okay, this is exactly one and a half centimeters, and this is exactly one fourth of a centimeter, so that it looks, instead of um, kind of haphazard, it looks more like, you know, measured lines of where they stop. Um, that doesn't look natural. It looks more artificial. We don't want lines that go, um, dots that are evenly spaced out. Because that doesn't really look like a plant. That looks like a grid. And while some plants do that, this one doesn't. The more nature, I don't know, What's that little Bob Ross thing said? He said, uh, happy accidents. Nature is filled with those. So embrace them as they come for this painting because haphazard looks a lot more natural than artificially constructed. And that's kind of what we're going for. All right, I'm gonna rinse my brush, wipe off the excess, and go in just for my few dots up of this away. And again, if I feel like I need to add more in later, I can. Like that glob looked a little too similar to the other ones. All right, good. I am now gonna come back and do my lines in that one real quick. Maybe a little more blue. I think I want that to be darker. So I'm going to add more straight up pigment. The problem with adding so much water on my palette to get the color and uh, shade that I want is that when I try to go back, you kind of have to add more pigment to make up for the difference. All right. darker on this side. I'm going to do just a couple of darker stipples along the edge of this one now that we've now that all this is dried just to add a little bit more depth. And I'm also with the very tip of my brush going to add in a couple of veins on these guys. It looks too plain, I think. You don't have to do these. I'm just kind of making them up as I go along. going on in there, kind of starting at different heights. I'm not going to do it on every one. And just a couple more stipples around the edge to darken. Not too much, but just enough to create a depth to it. There we go. All right. I'm going to add some little veiny bits over here too. I'm going to make sure my green is blue enough to kind of match what's going on over there. Yeah, that'll do. Again, 
this is just the tip of my brush coming off whichever way I please. It's just to add a little bit of texture. Maybe down there. A little bit less as we go farther down. And using the lighter, more yellowy green, I'll do this side. And it's okay if you do these in a very light value so that they kind of blend in to the surroundings. Do a couple of more dabs around the outside because again this area has dried and I can. And probably some over here with a deeper blue tooth. Alright, that looks good and I'll go for it. Moving on, we are going to go ahead and get the outside rim of this guy. Now you've noticed that in the process of this, um, I've got a little darker pink than I want spot there. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the other spots around here. I'm going to get a, a clean, damp brush. And I'm just gonna kind of scrub at it a little bit and blend it out, and that'll work. Now for this green, this part is catching the light a lot more than the other leaves, so we're gonna have more of a pure sap green over here. And if you want to do sap green with a little bit of lemon yellow, you go for it. Excuse me. I think I'm going to add just a little bit of the, the uh, opera rose, and a little bit goes a long way, but that'll kind of desaturate it, but still keep it sunny, you know? Alright, so with my desaturated, and again I've made sure that this is dry right here before I start, I'm going to Come in, do my edges. The closer I get to the tip of this, I'm going to start moving my brush more up and down, more vertical. I think this could stand to have a little more proper sap in it. This is getting a lot of cool colors on it. All right. I'm going to come and just do little dots, since this leaf is smaller than this one, or at least what we're seeing of it is. No tired of these yet? Too bad, we're not done. Alright, rinse my brush, dab the excess, coming a little bit further down. like maybe one or two. Again, we can always add more. Um, we're going to do the same thing over here, but this time if you didn't use a desaturated green here, we're definitely going to use it here. But it is going to be a lot more heavily pigmented. So get your green um, without in an area without water. Just a little hint of highly pigmented pink. And there we go. See, this is a desaturated sap green. Um, it's the same as the color we just did up here, but up here is going to be a lot lighter and down here is going to be a lot darker, but kind of fading in. So we're going to come along the outside edge here with our higher pigment, and I think I might add a little bit of blue just for fun. There we go. Now, I didn't trace this down as wavy as was on my outline, and I want to make it wavier, so this is my chance to do that. I'm going to come out 
little bit further, dip a little bit lower. So even though my pink came across straight, I can create the shape I want right here. All right. And the further down this direction we get with this thing, the darker it's going to be and the further out here it's going to be lighter. So I'm going to do just a little bit of the dark there and then I'm going to go ahead, you know, before we had been doing the dark and just rinse our brush to the light, then rinse it to the lighter. I'm going to go ahead and do that now so I can, um, oops, I forgot to dab my brush, so I can get that dark to light effect. And there's not as much of the leaf down here for us to do the stippling on. And I'm sure you guys are like, oh, hallelujah, this is awful. But it, we want to leave a little bit of the pink to see through to show that this is the same idea as the leaf that's up above. It's the same leaf, it's just slightly different. All right? We're going to wait for that to dry, and then we're going to come back and do the veins. But while we're waiting on that bit, we are going to come and start on our stems. Uh, let's see. Now, the stem parts that are closer to the underside of the plant are going to be darker. They're going to have more shadow to them. And the tricky part um, for these stems is making sure that we have dark that's, one, different from where it up here, and different from each other, since they're kind of close together. We're going to be using our color theory to create that kind of effect. And, yeah, let's go ahead and start with the stem that comes off of this, since we're going to be using some of that green that we just used. So with that desaturated green, we're going to add some blue. Now when you're painting, all shadows have, I say all, I mean like 99% of the shadows that you paint are going to have some blue in it. So we are going to get our darker value of that green and because it was different enough from this um, I'm going to start there I'm going to rinse my brush, dab off the extra and start pulling it down this way and if you want to add back in um, some of the lighter sap there after we've got that shadow we can I'm going to try and make sure um, that this half, the right half, is going to be darker, of a, a darker value. So I'm going to get my kind of desaturated color there. I'm going to do a little hint of the bluish desaturation there along this edge. Rinse my brush. Make sure it's dried off on my paper towel real well. Um, turn it to my advantage and blend this color out a little bit. That way it looks kind of like this side's a little bit lighter than the other one. I'm also going to drop in some of the darker right there where these edges meet. Um, just to again create the idea of shadow. If you want to get just the lightest touch of lemon yellow to put along that edge, you can. You are more than welcome. Alright, that's one stem done. While we're waiting on that to dry, I'm going to come up and do these guys. I want it to have a little bit more of a foresty green, so I'm going to go back to my slightly non-desaturated color for that. So much of watercolor is just literally testing your colors, I swear. Um, Them, but I drew them on by hand because I forgot to trace them, and that's on me. I'm also going to come and 
do a couple little dabs up here along the top. Not too many. All right. Let's see. We can go ahead and start on this one up here while we're waiting for this little intersection to dry. I'm going to get a bluer sap green mixture because I want it to be darker than that and what it's right underneath. And that's going to be kind of hard because that area is really dark. And this mixture is going to be tricky and if it's not perfect that's okay. Um, I have added a little bit of pink into my very uh, pigmented mixture of green and blue to kind of create just a difference of color. I'm gonna start with there. I'm going to come out to about there and I'm just using the tip of my brush and we're going to pull it down just a bit. All right. And we're going to do the same over here. Start it dark. If this isn't dry enough, give it a minute to wait. It should dry soon enough. Dab my brush off. And that one you don't have to pull down as far, or at all, if you don't want. Since it's behind everything, we have a little more wiggle room with that one. Alright, this I'm going to make sure I'm getting dark right up there. And again, along this edge here, I'm going to put most of the pigment. Get some water, dab, and blend it out just a little bit. And if you want to add in just a little bit of sap green on this part to add some warmth, go for it. I think I am. Just because I like how the, the dark blues of the shadow mixes with the other stuff. And I'm going to go ahead and bring that bad boy down to the edge of my page. Which in hindsight I could have done with the other one. So I might just... There we go. We're going to make sure all of this is dried before we head in with this last one. So again, if you need to, pause, refill your water, hang in there. We are almost done. Okay, so my this area has dried a little bit. I'm still a little wet over here, but we're not really going to touch that part. So we're ready to go on our last little bit before we do our final detail check. And we're good to go. Um, since we did this stem in our desaturated sap green, and we did this step in our bluish sap green, we're just going to stick with mostly sap green for this part. Um, we are, of course, going to make it a little darker up here, but not so dark that it blends into that thing. But And we're going to bring it down and kind of highlight this curve right there. So I'm going to get some pigmented sap green. I'm going to test it. I'm going to do just a bit of blue with it for this top part, but I'm going to keep more green than blue. And if this doesn't have enough contrast to what's up here, you can go back in with a slightly darker color and just do the little dots around there. All right, so I've got my darker bit. I'm going to grab my sap green and kind of mix it. I'm going to bring the light color down there. I'm going to make it kind of darker on that side. Maybe add in a little bit of the, the shadowy bit blue coming down. 
There's just so much wiggle room in here. And let it go down as it places. And if that feels a little too bright, I can always go in on top of it and when it's dried and make it a little bit darker. And that's totally fine. I think it's kind of fun to have a little bit of color. But I don't want it to stand out too much from everything else. All right. We are done. All right, that's it. Congratulations, you have completed this project. It was a long one, it was tedious, but you stuck through it. You managed it. Hats off to you. I'm so glad that you guys have joined us today um, for our watercolor class. I would love to see what you've painted, and I know you would love to share it with your neighbors as well and kind of see what they've done. Please feel free to go ahead and post your work on Instagram or Twitter using the hashtag Meridian Paint Along uh, or tag the Meridian at Broad Street Market, uh, tag me, etaylor.creates. We would all love to see what you've done. Kind words only, you guys. We're all trying together, all right? Thanks so much for joining us, and I will see you next time. Ooh.